Okay, so this is the makeup lab for the uh, periodic table, periodicity, and three dimensions uh, lab activity. So for the purpose statement, it reads, the per periodic table is the cornerstone of chemistry. Not only does it contain information that you read directly from the table itself, such as the atomic number and average atomic mass, but there are also patterns that are embedded in the table as well. Remember, periodic means to occur in a regular repeating pattern. We use the data provided to you to help construct three-dimensional models depicting periodic trends for ionization energy, which is the energy needed to remove an electron, electronegativity, which is the ability to attract an electron, atomic radius, which is the physical size of the atom, and ionic radius, which is the physical size of the ions after they have gained or lost an electron. When you're finished, you'll be able to view the three-dimensional properties of the periodic table and see the periodic table in an entirely new way from this point on. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this uh, first model here showing ionization energy. Remember, ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron. And what we see over on this side here, the way this is arranged, this first column here, these are the alkali metals. Over on the far side here, we have the uh, noble gases. So you can see pretty clearly that as you move from left to right across the period, there's a definite increase in ionization energy. And you can see also as you move down a family, you can see also as you move down a family that the ionization energy decreases. Okay. All right. And then electronegativity, you see a very similar pattern. Electronegativity, remember, is the ability of an atom to attract an electron. And what we see here with the uh, alkali metals is that that ability is very low. It also decreases as you move down a family. But you can see it very clearly increases as you move across a period. When we get to fluorine, which is part of the halogen family, and fluorine has the highest electronegativity. But notice which family is missing here on the very end. There are no noble gases. And the reason why this is the case is because noble gases already have a full valence shell. So if you're talking about ability to attract an electron, they really have nowhere to put it. They've already got their eight valence electrons, except in the case of helium, which has two. But they don't have any room to attract an electron, so their electronegativity is effectively zero. Okay, and then here we're looking at atomic radius. Atomic radius refers to the physical dimensions of the atom itself. Remember, the atoms are mostly empty space. The nucleus is very, very small. It's like the ant in the rose bowl. It's very, very tiny. Uh, and that's got 99.9% .9 of the mass there. So there's lots and lots of empty room. So what you see here pretty clearly is that as you move from left to right across the period, there's a definite decrease in the atomic radius. So all these here have one valence electron, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, and all the way over to eight. And you can see that it definitely decreases. You can also see, kind of look at it from the side here, you can see that as you move down a family, the atomic radius increases, it goes up. Okay, and the part of the reason why this happens is that um, when you're moving from left to right across the periodic table, you have uh, more valence electrons present, creates a greater negative charge, which is going to be more attractive to the positive nucleus, and so they just move in a little bit, and that's what causes the decrease. So in any given row or period on the table, the biggest element in terms of size and radius is always going to be the alkali metal, and the smallest is always going to be the noble gases. Lastly, the ionic radius. So these are lined up with their original atomic counterparts. So one of the things that uh, hopefully you can see from this is that these elements here, which are the alkali and the alkaline earth metals, uh, are smaller than their original atomic counterparts. And they're smaller because they have lost an electron, and so they've dropped down an energy level. So these are always going to be the uh, cations, positively charged, always smaller than the original. And then over here we have the anions, which are always going to be larger than the original atomic counterpart. Okay, Because they've gained an electron, and they uh, sort of swell up a little bit, and these are all negatively charged. Okay, So the main thing to remember with these is just what these, what these look like and what the uh, total trends are going to be. Okay, just a quick overview again showing each one. Maybe uh, rotate around each one so you can see them again. So 
So from left to right, we increase in terms of ionization energy. And as we move down a column or family, we decrease. You can see that pretty evident. Electronegativity, same thing as you move from left to right. You definitely increase in terms of electronegativity. And down a family, you also decrease. And you do not have the noble gases. And then atomic radius. Atomic radius, as you move from left to right, you should see a definite decrease. And down a family, you should see a definite increase in the atomic radius. And lastly, with the ionic radius, the cations, which are on the left, are always going to be smaller than their original counterparts above because they lost an electron. Anions on the right are always going to be bigger because they gained an electron, and they'll always be negatively charged.